Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be working on checkpoints. So, checkpoints, what I mean is if I have a checkpoint right here, and if I die, I will automatically go back to that checkpoint. If I continue on in my game and I activate another checkpoint, say if I die by these uh, spikes, I'll go back to that one. Even though I can go all the way back here, run over this checkpoint, and go into lava, I still get transferred up in that one. So that's what we're, we're going to be working on. So let's close our finished project and let's start working on the incomplete project. And let's also roll the intro. So we have the incomplete project here and you can see that the fox that we have, uh, when he goes over something like spikes and lava, he just dies and that's it. So we're going to be implementing those checkpoints, like I said. Uh, I can go over a couple of the other things if you really want me to, um, but let's just do a quick check of how the room is set up. I have a whole bunch of layers here. If I zoom in, I have some uh, a layer for initializations. So that's going to be the first thing that Game Maker runs. The other way we could do this is create a room before this room, and that's what probably most people will end up doing where it will generate any persistent objects that we need. But because we're just working in our single room here, that's really all I need to do. Uh, in here we have some instances such as the camera, and this is just a simple camera that will follow the fox. And the only other thing I have is some solid objects here. So this is how our fox moves around. And then I also have some death zones. So you can see that there's a death zone where these spikes are. There's also a death zone Lava, if I select the proper one, whatever one it is here, so you can see that one, the death zone, and that one. So that's how I determine if the fox is going to end up dying or not. So let's get right to it. And in the sprites, you can see that we already have a checkpoint sprite. So let's go and expand the checkpoints. And we have our effect here, but let's make a new object for this checkpoint sprite. So we'll say object underscore check this is assign it the sprite that we have and what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a global array to store our checkpoints and if you're not familiar with arrays it's basically just going to be it's an excel file if you want to think of it that way we're just going to have one column that has an x and a y coordinate so all we're going to do is let's create a, another object called object let's say checkpoint global so let's say checkpoint uh, manager yeah. or actually let's use controller sorry okay controller the checkpoint controller so in this checkpoint controller we're going to create an event and it's just going to be create and in here we'll use the global keyword so this is going to be accessible through all of our objects we'll just say checkpoint and say the checkpoint at column zero equals minus nine 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 and so this is going to be our x coordinate and we will also say one is going to be our y coordinate now we could have just said you know uh, global dot check point checkbox checkpoint x equals minus nine 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 and we could also do the same for point y and let's actually you know what let's do that it might be a little bit simpler and uh i'm a big fan for keeping it simple okay so in here we only have one create event. What we're going to do is go into our room and in the initializations, we're gonna drop our checkpoint controller in there. So basically, I just want the checkpoint controller to create um, that guy first. And let's check out our room. Gotta pull this up here. Our instance creation. Get this come up. That one, that one, and that one. Okay, so I wanna go down here, and this is why I would probably recommend the other room, is I want this one to be created first, so I'm gonna put it at the top of my list. So we are, our global variable is going to be created based off of this controller, and now we can work on the checkpoint themselves. The checkpoints are pretty easy. All we're gonna do is we've already assigned the sprite so we're going to say a create event and we're also going to have a collision event layer itself close my room to give us more room now in the create event all we're going to be doing is setting a flag we'll say is enabled 
equals play true. And all we're going to do with this is if this is enabled, we're going to allow the player to pass over. If it's not enabled, when the player passes over, nothing is going to happen. So when our player passes over our collision mask, we come into this uh, collision object player. So we could say is, if it is enabled, then what do we want to do? Well, first we're going to make sure that we turn it off. So I'll say equals false. And now we're going to access that global variable checkpoint. And we're going to say the X equals the X position of our checkpoint. And the Y is going to equal the Y position of the checkpoint. Now, the other thing I want to do is uh, in the finished project, you saw there was kind of an effect that we had. So I'm going to say instance create depth and based on the X and Y position of our um, checkpoint, we're going to create a little effect here. If I can spell depth correctly, plus one and object effect checkpoint. So we're going to create this, this guy right here. Um, where whenever we pass over that checkpoint. So if we go to our room and let's go to instances, we'll scroll in here. Let's add a checkpoint right there and let's add one there and let's make sure that these effects are work. So we're going to hit F5 and run the game. And you can see that now we have that effect there. We'll fix the fox, but uh, that's fine. If I come back over, I should be able to walk over this guy and now the effect there. Now, right now, when we die, nothing happens and we just need to actually code that uh, particular thing. And what we're going to be using is the death zone. So, in here, I'm going to close everything to clean it up. Inside the zones, we have an object death. And you can see that we have a couple events already. We have a target, which is equal to no one, whether or not the death zone has been triggered. And we have an alarm that just says, it sets that Boolean defaults, and we have the collision on the player. So what we need to do here is we need to set a couple things up. We're gonna to have to make sure that we have something within the global um, checkpoints. And if we do have anything in the global checkpoints, then we can return them to the certain spot. So right now we have has triggered. So basically once the player has collided, we set the has triggered to true. So this statement cannot run anymore. Therefore our uh, alarm is actually going to fire because we can only set the alarm once. If we continue to set it each time, it's never gonna count down. And that's the important part here. The rest of it is just doing um, changing the target to the player that we collide with so we can move that instance up. So the alarm set here, we're gonna set alarm zero for half a second. And inside alarm zero, all we're gonna say is the target.x. And remember the target is whatever we collide it with. And this is instance, it's the player. We'll say target.x equals global.checkpointx. And we'll copy and paste that for the Y position as well. And I'm also going to set my state animation on my target equal to the animation, animation states uh, idle. And this isn't something that you have to do. It's just something I have set up. Um, and I guess there's actually no, there's not really any animations. Either. So if we run this, we should be able to fall in this lab. And let's see if we teleport back here in half a second. And we do, so let's go over this guy and let's fall down. Okay, we get teleported to the right one. I can walk over this one. Now, when we die, we should go to the one that's over here because this was already enabled. Let's check that out, perfect. And because we're using the death zone on the spikes, it will work as well. So really, the only thing left to do is to go through the game and add these checkpoints to wherever I want the player to have a checkpoint. Um, checkpoint itself, so I could have one there, and I have some invisible blocks here. Um, if we wanted to fix the fox and uh, spikes and stuff, uh, we can move the not spikes, the checkpoints. We can move these checkpoints uh, all the way up here, and we could put them right there. I think, I think that will fix it. If we hit F5, you could probably it'd be easier to put them on another layer. Um, obviously that didn't work, so I would probably use another layer for that. But uh, you can see that the 
Um, checkpoints are indeed working. If I jump on my invisible spikes, come back here and I fall in the lava, I get ported up there. All right, and that is it. That is how easy it is to do checkpoints in Game Maker Studio. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope that you've learned a few things and you're able to use this method in some of your games that you're creating. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.